Yeah. Great out Quinn Miners since he stepped in for Graham and just taken over there. I think Quinn Miners has done a great job. Uh, we talk about it a lot here at the Broncos, and um, I talk about it a lot, but Coach Munchak is a heck of a coach. I think he does a great job of making sure that in our O-line room, it's the next man up mentality. <clears throat> Natani Moody had to do it early in the season. Quinn Bailey's had to do it. Calvin Anderson's had to do it. Um, and Quinn Miners has got the call as well, and I think he's stepped up to the plate and done a fantastic job. Love his style of play, and um, he's going to continue to grow and grow and be a better player, so really proud of him. For sure. I think there's a ton of value in that. Uh, I think that we've continued to get better and better at that. Looking back to last week when we played the Lions, I think we ran the ball close to 40 times and close to 200 rush yards. Um, and when we do that as an offense, we take care of the ball. That keeps our defense off the field, keeps them, uh, you know, they're juiced up. They have energy when they go back out there. And it's always nice when they go out there and do what they did as well. So for an offense, I think every week our goal is take care of the football. Let's rush the ball. Because the more you run the ball, the more it opens up the pass game, the play action game as opposed to just passing the ball the whole time. And that's also a credit to, to Pat Shermer um, with the game plan that he had, Mike Munchak, Shula, you know, the, the whole offensive coaching staff. I think they've been doing an extremely good job. Did you run the ball more, let's see, some more predictable with that, that dominant personality? It feels like he was last week. How much is on the line to roll up the sleeves and be physical and win? Because, you know, the team feels like you're going to run more than you're going to pass. Yeah, I feel like that's a identity that we love as an offensive line and as an offense. Um, whether you, you know the wide receivers even like when we run the ball because they can feel that their pass routes are opening up as we run the ball more. So every week, this week we're going against the Bengals. They do an extremely good job uh, defending the run. I think they're they're top five in the league in defending the run. They're top five in the league in sacks as well. So they're a good defense. But every week, no matter who you're playing you got to be able to roll up the sleeves as an offensive line, and you got to be able to get rush yards for the reasons I just talked to him about. It opens up the pass game, opens up the play action game. and So I'd say that's a goal every week, Troy. And Trey Hendrickson, 12 and a half sacks. Yeah. How do you guys contain him? Keep him going on? Well, we got one of the best left tackles in the league with Garrett Bulls. Um, I love playing next to the guy. I think he's going to do a great job against Hendrickson. Uh, Hendrickson kind of plays right to left, so he's probably going to be over on the right side over Garrett majority of the game. And um, just like every week, we've went against a lot of good pass rushers this whole year, and we just got to make sure we shut them down. And to, tr uh, to talking to Troy, us running the ball will help that out a lot. You know, we don't want to get down in the game early and put ourselves in a situation where we're playing catch up, having to pass the ball downfield with a great pass rusher like that. Um, so if we can run the ball, I think we can help that situation. But we also have Garrett Bowles, so that, that, that makes me feel comfortable as well. As an O-lineman, can you sense, like in third and fourth quarters, the defense is getting battered because they're having to tackle every every snap when you're running it. Can you, can you yeah, I think it? that's a huge part of rushing the football. You know, whenever we're the way we played the Lions, the way we played the Cowboys, the way we played the Chargers as well, um, you can kind of sense in those games the more you run the ball. That's kind of why you want to run the ball. You want to break down the defense, and it's the NFL. These guys are tough. A lot of guys you can't really break their will. They're going to keep coming, coming for more. Um, but the more you rush the ball, the more that I feel like you do batter them down. And that's your goal as an offensive line is, hey, how can we break these guys down throughout the game? And when you look at the Bengals, not very many teams have been able to do that. They've been able to shut down teams to less than 100 yards mostly the whole season. So that's a huge test for us is how can we rush the ball against these guys, batter them down, and then kind of get to the play action and the, the drop back pass game as well. A few minutes ago, Pat Shermer said, let talk about Teddy Bridgewater, said one part of kind of his leadership and presence is that he's stern with, with guys. What, what do you kind of sense from Bridgewater in the huddle, in the locker room, in terms of his leadership? Yeah, I think Teddy's a great leader. It's been a privilege and an honor for me to build block for that guy this whole season. You can learn a lot from him, just the way he shows up to the facility every single day, the way he carries himself, the way he likes to lead guys around him. He does an extremely good job. I think Shermer nailed it right on the head. I think Teddy expects a lot out of this offense. Uh, but most importantly, I'd say Teddy expects the most out of himself. He's not one of those guys that expects a lot out of his team and his teammates, but doesn't really hold himself to a high standard. I think Teddy holds himself to the highest standard, um, and I think that's what makes him such a great leader. You grew up in, as a member of Broncos country. What does it mean to be playing a meaningful game in December in front of this crowd? How do you kind of, what is your vibe, what is your energy for this it, moment? It, it's huge. Denver Broncos country, uh, they deserve that. You know, the last two years we haven't answered the bell. Um, and when, it, when we got to December, I think mo the last two years we've probably been out of the playoff race. So this is big for uh, Denver Bronco country. I think it's huge for our coaching staff and a testament to our staff. Vic Fangio, George Payton, his first year here. 
Um, and every single coach, man, I could go on and on and list them all, but that's a huge testament to them and how they've answered the bell as well. Also a testament to us players. We just got to keep on working. Uh, I think we would all agree that, that we, we're not even satisfi satisfied with seven and six. It sure is great to be in the playoff hunt and have such a big game like we have this weekend, but we expect more out of ourselves, and um, this game is uh, huge this weekend. We know how big that is, and we want to win that for our staff. We want to win that for each other, and we want to win that for Bronco country. Similarities to the excitement or enthusiasm when Javante has the ball compared to when Philip Lindsay was a rookie, you know, it's like that was everything he was doing his rookie year. Yeah, for sure. Um, they are completely different runners, man, for sure. I think that they have completely different characteristics. But w when Phil ran out of the stadium and when Phil got the ball, I felt like the crowd was electric. They, they knew something big was about to happen. Uh, I think that's the same when Javante gets the ball. He's proved that week in and week out, and he deserves that credit because when he does have the ball in his hands, big plays are bound to happen. As an offensive line, we've learned, hey, 33 or 25 as well. Melvin does a heck of a job. Uh, 33 or 25 have the ball. You better, you know, get off your block, and if they're getting tackled, go push it because you know they can break three or four tackles on their way there. So, uh, yeah, very electric man. I think the fans are very excited about Javante. Dalton, I was told that offensive linemen in the past with the Broncos in cold weather would cut the sleeves off scuba suits but wear them underneath their uniforms to stay warm. <laughs> would you ever do that? <laughs> cut the sleeves off of a scuba suit? So they would be my... sleeveless, so you wouldn't know they're wearing something, but would wear something underneath. I've never done that. I didn't know that I had access to do something like that. It sounds like a good idea because you still look tough, but you're kind of warm underneath. Uh, so I'll have to see if I can find a scuba suit, man. But uh, we've been blessed with great weather, man. It hasn't been too bad. It's been pretty beautiful every Sunday. So... Um, yeah, I think that's an O-line mantra, man, no matter what the weather. I think my last two years I've played in a couple blizzards, man, and you go sleeveless, man. It's kind of a – But you know. would consider the scuba suit underneath? I'll consider it, yeah. If okay. someone can get me access to one, I'll consider it for sure. Thanks, Thanks you guys.